Hello. I'm so glad that you are here as I get everything figured out and you hear those million clicks everywhere. <laughs> That's me figuring out the room as I come to you with, whoa, what's that? What's the, what is that? The seven minute seat. Mamas, you got the Holy Spirit inside of you. It is time to take that seed and bring it alive. Oh, guys, this is out of control. What is this? Okay. Bring it alive in your family. Okay. Look, my tech support or my husband is not here. So I, I, I got it kind of. Look at this terrible shading. He's going to, hopefully you're listening to the audio version <laughs> and not watching the video. And now you're all going to look at the video and be like, wow, that's awful. Okay. What'd your kids learn in root? The root semester, the real you this week, they learned about, oh no, it's a bad word, temptation. So our seven minutes seed today is going to be about that. And we're going to discover it's actually not a bad word if we actually know the definition of it. Woo! Okay, so I am, <laughs> let's see if I can, if I can pull this in here, guys. I am Pastor Kate. Um, I'm going to put up a thing that actually says Josh and Kate. My husband is Josh. He's not here with us in seven minute seeds. We are over rootbible.com. The Lord had us uh, begin this when we had stepped out of pulpit ministry in a church building and we realized we wanted to help uh, families grow spiritually between Sundays, not just on Sunday. We wanted to do a better job than we were doing. So uh, we set out to do this. Our current semester of what you can register free for is the real you at rootbible.com. We have classes for preschool, elementary, junior high, high school, and adult. Yes, you heard it right. They are all there and they're free. These are live classes. They aren't pre-recorded. You can ask questions. You can get prayer. They are powerful. And we wanted to make sure that every generation gets the truth and that at home you can be watering that truth in a real way. Not like, uh, hey, we all learned things at church. How'd it go? It was good. What'd you learn uh, about Jesus? That was the answer last week. Well, we did. Okay. Well, how do we make that real? Okay. Well, this week we're learning about the real us. This builds off of something I learned at church last week. And mom, go out and download the table talk or the car chat so we can discuss it a little further because I don't get this temptation thing. Um, let's talk about it. Let's ask the Holy Spirit. And then you've got answers because you've listened to 7 Minute Seed and you're ready to go. So here we go. Let's get the timer on the clock and hopefully nothing else if I do it correctly. All right, here we go. Seven minutes is on the clock. Okay, dokay. We need to realize this and help our kids realize this. When we get saved, when we accept the finished work of Jesus Christ, God takes the sin out of us. We are a new creation, okay? There is no longer sin in us. It has no dominion. It has no right. It has no power because it's been taken out of us. Now, we have sometimes looked at it like we've been removed from sin, which then sets a mindset that I can easily fall back into sin. No, sin came out of you. And when you are walking in your new creation reality, sin has no power over you. You are no longer a slave to sin. How cool is that? Second Corinthians 5, 17, if anyone belongs to Christ, there is a new creation. Some definitions or translations change it to new um, um, creation or new identity or new creature. Right? That the world has never seen. The old things have gone. Everything is made new. Okay? The truth is we no longer have a sin nature. It no longer dwells in us if we've accepted a new nature, which is that of Christ in salvation. Okay? We know that our old life died with Christ on the cross so that our sinful selves would have no power over us and we would, be, would no longer be slaves to sin. Now that's the same for all of us. Woohoo! Okay. 
Now, where's that? They're like, uh, Pastor Kate, you said you were going to talk about temptation. What's that have to do with that? That means as you get an opportunity to walk out your new nature, there's some testing, okay? When you um, begin a new position, let's see, eh? you've joined the armed forces. You go through some training. This is renewal of the mind in the idea of the Bible, learning to hear his voice and identify his voice apart from your own, right? The word helps you do that, dividing soul and spirit, bone and marrow, right? There's this training process. And as you are trained along the way, there are tests. Sometimes you take the same test over and over again because you can't seem to pass it. You've not surrendered your life to this new life living and this new way of thinking that it comes around again. But guess what? If it's coming around, it's an opportunity to rejoice. So the Greek word for temptation is an experiment, a trial, a probation, a testing or being tried or affliction. Okay, so it's like, it's like something coming up against you. Will you overcome it with the overcomer this time? Or will this test come around next time you need a little more training? Okay, so in the armed forces, you get a lot of training and then you have a test and it moves you up a rank, right? If you pass that test, you've trained enough that you understand how to operate in that new level, right? So if he has called us with spiritual giftings and, and has given us all things, we have a process of which walking that out. Now, he's not the one that brings the tests. This world is full of them. But as we get to know who is in us and how to utilize all that he's put in us and live it out, surrendered to him in this new life, then when it comes around, it's a cinch. Then when something comes up that is, is, is a temptation, or a test, it's not from the Lord, it's from the fallen world. But we can laugh at it because we know who's in us and who has equipped us with all things to walk through it. Not only equipped us, but says he will make a way out. Like he is the provider. He has brought sin out of us. He has filled us with all things. I'm referring to first Peter. Okay. He's given us everything. He's even given us his faith. And so as tests and trials come along that's just us strengthening our surrendered walk in our new creation identity that's just burning up old ways and process that now I've moved up another rank now I can laugh in the face of I imagine it like weight training okay if you go to the gym and you only lift to where it's comfortable and leave you'll have very minimal results and this is a lot of um, perpetuated Christian living. Okay, I'm saved. Now I live and call it Christ. No, you're saved. You're a new creation. Now your life is in Christ. Your old man is gone. That means there's going to be some growing, some stretching. You know, he refers to new salvation as a baby because you have a whole new way of learning to live. And as you're learning and you're set on your feet and you try that walk and you fall, you get up and try again. I know he gave me these legs for walking. He's already provided me with every muscle that I need to walk across this floor. All the toes I need, the feet I need, the strength I need. So I know I can do this. And here we go. Okay, he refers to new, new salvation as a baby. That's because we're going to grow that resistance training in the gym. If I only lift to where it's comfortable, I'm never going to grow. If I set my baby up and they fall a few times, I tell them, you never have to try again. Don't worry about it. That was too difficult. They're never going to learn to walk. See, that is why we can rejoice. We feel like, oh, look, they tried. Look, or when someone brings us temptation, our kiddo is dealing with something they saw on the computer and didn't want to see. We can laugh. Woo, what an opportunity for God to prove himself faithful through us. Because as new creations, it's Christ that lives in us. And we can laugh at the enemy. We can laugh at the ways of the world. We can laugh at old ways of thinking because we have overcome them. How? Through Christ Jesus who has already overcome the world. So when somebody comes to you with something they're struggling with, because did you know the Bible says we're supposed to do that? So at home, if our kids come to us with something we're struggling with, we don't have to be worried. We don't have to be stressed. I can't believe I never thought I'd deal with this in my home. No, we laugh. We find his joy 
because we know this test is simply a trial he's already overcome. And when we surrender to him, it's done. And that's how we can raise our family. Don't you know the one that's already overcome it all lives in you? That is why we can rejoice when trials and tribulations come across our path. James 1, 2 through 3 says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, consider it opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Growing up in the Lord. Another opportunity to surrender my old way of living and thinking to the Lord and allow him to pay the new path that he has planned and predestined for me. That is awesome. Doesn't that change your mind to stop being stressed out or find anxiety about trials or tribulations or tests? It's just another opportunity for the Lord to show himself faithful through us as we surrender our ways of doing things to his way of living in and through us. All right, that was seven minutes of seed. I went like 30 seconds longer, okay? We needed to. Sometimes people get so downtrodden with tests and tribulations, we forget that he's on the throne and has accomplished it all. And that if we're going through this test, it's a wonderful opportunity to grow outside of the old way of living, the way the world exists, and start stepping into our new creation realities. Okay, that was really fast talking. I hope that you'll join us for us, <laughs> me in the screen. I hope you'll join me for seven minutes. See next time. I try to do seven a week. I sometimes get three. You will always get three Monday, Wednesday, Friday, always seven minutes of seed and sometimes more. We'll work up to that, won't we? Until then, let your family be overwhelmed with God's blessings, his goodness, his peace and joy. We'll see you next time.